So you think women don't, won't, or can't play tackle football? Don't tell Dana Spalling, CFO and game day manager of the New York Sharks. She'll tell you just how many women's teams and leagues there are. There's, a, there's around 100 spread across three leagues. Our league is the Independent Women's Football League, the IWFL. Mm -hmm. um, they have been around since 2002. And um, then there is the, uh, the WFA and the, I can't remember the acronym for the other one, but it's a Women's Spring Football League, I think okay. it is. So WSFL, I think is what it is. Tell us about the role that you play within the Sharks organization. I am the, I've played several roles. I've been with the Sharks since 2001, where I started as a player for four years. Mm -hmm. I was 37 when I found out about it. So I looked at my watch literally when I heard about <laughs> it and the clock was ticking and I ran out there and I tried out and made the team. But during that time, I got involved with helping run the team. All of the people who run it are volunteers and it's, it's love of the game, it's sheer wow. passion. We've put in tens of thousands of hours to do what we love. And I love it as much off the field as the players now love it on the field. Do your spectators pay to come to games? Yes, they do. Yes. Oh, and what do you yes. charge? We charge $15. Wow, that's yes. good. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's progress now. For the now. New York area, that's, that, I mean, we've been charging that for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. So, and then they don't blink at that amount in New York. In other smaller markets, say mm -hmm. maybe down in North Carolina or something, they charge 10 you know, it depends on your market. Do you have sponsors? We do have sponsors, but we, we have knocked on the doors of so many major corp corporations, um, you know, sports companies, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. We, it, we've had little bits of interest. Maybe they contribute footballs for the league that we're in, or maybe they contribute some jerseys to a team. But getting it to take hold on a really large scale where we really see the financial benefits of it on a broad scale still hasn't happened yet. So the, the women have to raise money to play, our players. So they go out and they knock on doors of businesses and we offer advertising in various forms in exchange for whatever they may pay that player. Um, and uh, you know, the girls can go out and get sponsorships from friends and family. And if they get an amount over a certain, in a certain level, say 50 to $100, we mail them a t-shirt. You know, mm -hmm. it helps with an incentive for someone wanting to help support one of these women um, to, to come with their dream. Women work full-time jobs. Many of them have families and yes. other lives, yes. and they do this part-time because they love it. They love it. Mm -hmm. Yet men make millions and millions of dollars, yep. and you wonder, when will that ever change? Mm -hmm. When will women be able to sustain themselves simply by playing football? Will it happen? I, I, I don't know if it'll happen, mm -hmm. but in my view, having been involved with this for 15 years, when society's view changes of what women should be doing, I, I can't stand the word should. I, I try to remove it from my vocabulary <laughs> because to me that's a limiting word mm -hmm. to tell girls they can or men they can or can't do something or should or shouldn't do something. Right. But I think once we can tar start getting more of the message out to teaching girls they can do anything they want to um, and getting society to embrace the idea, I think embracing the idea of women playing such a hard hitting contact sport is where the problem lies. Oh, yeah. And I that think takes you're right. a while to change that. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.